Welcome to Naga Technologies. This tutorial is about COM technology, also known as Microsoft's Component Object Model. With this tutorial, you're going to acquire a knowledge of COM technology overview. Let's begin with chapter one. Please note that it's a COM technology, not a programming language or, or object-oriented design. It's also known as a rapid application development tool. I'll explain them in detail why these terms have been given. So the introduction to COM, why we need to develop the COM technology. These are the questions which were arised prior to development of COM technology. How about if we change our application or we can introduce new features once it has been delivered to the customers and customers were using it. How about if we can develop our applications dynamically instead of completely rewriting or recompiling it while introducing the features. How it will be if application is customizable, flexible? Of course, the importantly, how about if it is dynamic? If S is your answer to all these questions, then you are at correct place. This tutorial is for you. So what is COM? COM is a procedure or a standard through which a developers can develop software components. COM can be used to create reusable binary executables that provide services for applications. COM components are connected with interfaces to form applications. This is quite important. It's a backbone to COM technology. Interfaces. Everything is developed in COM is in interfaces. Components can be removed and replaced at runtime without rebuilding or recompiling the application. Okay, so let's begin with components. In traditional programming language, or I would say that in olden days, when an application is developed, compiled, and shipped to the customers, that's it. That's the end of the application. Once if developer decides to introduce a new feature or customers request for an additional features, then the developers need to modify the existing application or rewrite the entire application rebuild the application, compiled it, and shipped it again. This is a major disadvantage with these monolithic applications, unchangeable applications. It's static and cannot be changed. So how it would be if at customer's place, the application can be modified? How it would be if application introduce a new features while customers are still using it. Yes, that is an awesome technology. That is where the COM technology comes up. The plan is nothing but to divide the application into multiple parts. This way we can customize the application. The dividing the application into multiple parts is what is achieved by the COM technology. So the component application would be interacting with multiple components 
to form the component application. The main aim is a platform independent. It is distributed object oriented system for creating binary software components that can interact to form an application. Here, a component application is there where uh, it indulges with four components, component A, component B, component C, and component D. Together, these components forms the component application. So the advantages of this component application is it can be modified dynamically. It can be replaced. And these things are achieved by replacing the components. Assume that a customer has the component application and a new feature has been added as form of component D. Then developers need to replace only the component D. which adds new feature. So the existing component A, component B, and component C are still intact and they have been not disturbed. So this is the new component replaced with the old component to form an application. This is the way we can customize. So the component benefits. The majorly the component benefits which includes application customization, component libraries, and distributed components. Application customization. You know, sometimes uh, clients or customers want to customize their application. Is the way how we want to customize our home interiors. Similarly, a component architecture allows customers to customize their application. If you see the figure, there is a component application which uses text editor, which includes component A, component B, component C, component D, and component B is nothing but a text editor. Some customers would prefer to use the other, other editor instead of text editor. So we can deliver the other customer the same application, but replacing with only one part of the component. This is the way we can customize. And all the customers are happy. And the rework or redeveloping the entire application work has been avoided by the developers. The other benefit is component libraries. Ideally, a component architecture is also known as rapid application development. And this can be achieved with the help of component library. Assume that the library of components which are already developed, built, compiled, and they are available in the form of library. So a developers, when they are developing the new application, they can use these existing components instead of developing from scratch. The best example is ActiveX controls, which are embedded in our application and can be reused. Most of the time, most applications can be built using standard components. Here we can see that a component E has been reused in a component application. The other major benefit is distributed components. Distributed components is an extension to component object model that, that enables software components to communicate with each other across different computers on a local area network or on a wide area network or across the network. We consider the following figure. Component C, component D are available in the remote machine. And they were replaced in the component application. And the client will even never notice or never know that the components are remotely located. 
the end user will always have the feasibility to use the application even though the components are remotely available that will not impact the component application so what are the component requirements as i said earlier the advantage of using components results directly from their ability to dynamically plug in <laughs> into an unplug in from an application to achieve this capability components must meet two requirements dynamic linking encapsulation again these are the main important object oriented features all the components must link dynamically dynamic linking consists of compiling and linking code into a form that is loaded by the program at run time as well as link at time so the ability to load them at run time is what distinguishes them from ordinary object files with dynamic linking customers can replace the components at run time while running the applications and the second important requirement is encapsulation the components which we develop must hide the details how they were implemented it's a discussion that is it dynamic linking is required or the encapsulation which one is important dynamic linking requires encapsulation to form application components are connected to one another to replace a component with new component you must disconnect the old component from the system and then connect to the new one the new component must connect in the same manner as old component or you will have to rewrite recompiler relink these components <clears throat> the component must have the computer language used for its implementation any client should be able to use any component regardless of the computer language in which the client or the component is written components must be shipped in a binary form if components are to hide their implementation language they must be shipped which are already compiled linked and ready to use components must be upgradable without breaking existing users whenever you introduce a new version of component by replacing the existing version it should support components must be transparently relocatable on the network any component and the program that uses it should be able to run in the same process or in different processes or on different machines ignore the typo that is a machines not machines the client should be able to treat a remote comp component in the same way it is treated a local component <laughs> <coughs> sorry so the key concepts of com these are self explanatory presently we'll focus on component object model the base standard definition is a binary interface standard for software components that enables inter process communication and object creation in a language independent manner the rest concepts i'll explain them in detail in coming up chapters for now we'll focus on com so the usage and benefits of com as discussed interoperability reusability versioning language independence component based development scalability the way we progress the chapters i'll be explaining each of these advantages in detail so com in application development the microsoft component object model is a widely used framework for developing software components that can be used across different programming languages and platforms allowing developers to build complex and scalable applications with ease
finally we came to the conclusion com provides a standard way to write components the key to interchanging components is encapsulation as discussed com provides encapsulation by emphasizing the connection or interface between the components and the clients how the components interact with other components with interfaces is the one which we need to understand and i'll explain interfaces and how to implement the interfaces in our next chapter so these are the basic things in short com is a specification it specifies how to build components that can be dynamically interchanged com provides a standard that components and clients follow to ensure that they can operate together standards are as important to component architecture as they are to any system with interchangeable parts the com specification is a document that sets the standard for our component architecture components we develop in this book or in this tutorial we follow a com specification i'll be explaining them in detail so com is not a computer language com does not compete with computer languages discussions about whether c++ is better than com or vice versa doesn't make any sense because com and c++ have different purposes com tell us how to write components com also does not compete with or replace dlls com uses dlls to provide components with the ability to dynamically link however com the best way is to take the advantage of ability of dlls to dynamically link we'll discuss this in more in coming up chapters that's it for now thank you i'll be coming up with the next chapter the interfaces